Hope you guys are having a great day. Today is July 15th, 2020, and we're going to be looking at what the Senate currently looks like as of July 15th, 2020, according to polls taken in multiple states. So, as we know, the Democrats need a total of at least 50 seats to win back the Senate. In the case that Joe Biden becomes the president in 2021, they would need a total of only 50 seats to win back the Senate. In the case that President Trump is reelected, the Republicans would only need, or excuse me, the Democrats would need a majority of 51 seats to win the Senate. So, again, in presidential years, the Senate, the balance of the Senate always comes down to the vice president. It always comes down to who wins the presidency. So, again, whether it be um, by a solid majority or by a 50-50 a, um, um, but with the vice president majority, um, that's how the Democrats can win back the Senate. So, um, don't mind that the current map you see on your screen is um, the electoral map. It's just that I'm, I'm going to use the same map that I use for presidential elections. And I'm going to be going in alphabetical order, just as it's more convenient for me. So, quickly going off, since we have a lot of states, we have 33 states to cover. Uh, or 33 races, I should say. Uh, we'll quickly start in Alabama. Currently, the incumbent senator is Doug Jones. And he did win with 50% of the vote in the 2017 special election that we all know he won by less than a percent, by around a percentage point against um, Roy Moore. And but despite this, um, although he is the incumbent senator, he, it's it's a state like Alabama, and that state is just very Republican. And most polls show this that show that this um, this seat is going to flip back to the Republicans. So with a very small contest, um. Very small people contesting this. Um, we're going to assume Alabama is going to go to the Republicans. Moving on to Alaska, uh, Dan Sullivan won this state in 2014. Most polls show that he's safe from being um, ousted out of office. And moving on to the Arizona special election. Um, Martha McSally is the current incumbent senator. She was appointed in 2019. And most polls show that this race is either a toss-up or a lean Democratic state, um, senatorial-wise. Um, she's currently the incumbent, but she's actually trailing in the latest poll against the Democratic, um, the presumed Democratic nominee, uh, Mark Kelly, former astronaut. He's he's currently leading 46 to 42, and for hypothetical reasons, or just according to the polls, this shows that Arizona would be a flip, just like Alabama. So currently, a net gain of zero for both parties. Moving on to the state of Arkansas, Tom Cotton has almost no um, challengers. Only challenger really is a Libertarian and an Independent. Um, so he easily will win re-election in that state. Or in a seat. In the state of Colorado, this is another um, key battleground state. Not only in the presidential race, but also in the Senate. Uh, the current senator is Cory Gardner, Republican. Uh, most polls show this as a toss-up or lean Democratic state. Again, he is going against very popular governor, former governor John Hickenlooper, who also ran for president in 2020. So, with that being said, um, the polls currently show that he is in the lead, that he will probably, well, as of now, he's in the lead. He's going to, he, he's in advantage, basically. So, for the time being, we're going to be putting Colorado in the Democratic section with a net gain now of one for the Democrats. In the state of Delaware, Chris Coons, most polls show this as a safe, as a safe seat. Um, not many Republicans really are going to contest this. So, that one goes to the Democrats. Now, Georgia. Georgia has two, two elections. A special, um, a special election for... The remainder of, um, can't remember who, but um, the senator's term and the regular one that, that occurs in this election, which is David Perdue. See, we're going to start with the normal one. Uh, David Perdue is the incumbent senator, Republican. He won with 53% of the vote last time. And most polls show this as a either lean or tilt Republican seat. The latest poll shows him leading by five points against his, Repo against his Democratic challenger, John Ossoff. So we're going to be giving this to David Perdue. Now, this is pretty interesting. In the Georgia special election, um, Kelly Loeffler is currently the incumbent senator. She was appointed in 2020. And although most polls show this as either a lean, uh, all polls, all major polls show this as a lean Republican state, or seat, I should say, um, the polls say otherwise to who's being the candidate. Um, although she is running to, to serve the, the rest of the term, the latest poll shows that um, she's actually um, losing against the Collins, who I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, is a United States representative. So the latest poll shows her losing 26 to 24 in the open primary because, again, 
Georgia works differently than most states. It's an open primary. Um, all candidates, both Republican and Democrats, run in the same election. If no candidate can get more than 50% of the vote, then a runoff in um, January, if I'm not mistaken, January or um, or um, December would happen. So currently, Doug Collins is in the lead. Incumbent Kelly Loeffler is has is trailing by two points, 26 to 24. And three other Democrats currently split the vote between the re the remaining vote that's left. Um, so for the time being, again, Georgia's filled out red. Just assume that those two seats are going to stay red for now. Moving on to the next seat in the state of Idaho, Jim Rissich. Not really much of a, much of a contention. Um, Idaho is a really red state. Not really much contention. Illinois, same thing. Dick Durbin, not really much of a race there. In the state of Iowa, Joni Ernst did, is a target for some people. Um, most polls I show this as a lean Republican state or as a toss-up state. But given the facts that, um, or given that this is a presidential year, that this is a state that the president does well in, um, that's going to bring out his base. That's going to bring out the base that Joni Ernst needs to win re-election. So I'm going to be giving the state of Iowa and her seat back to the Republicans. We on to Kansas. Pat Roberts is retiring, but the state is expected to go um, back Republican. Only one poll um, shows um, that it is a toss-up state, but for now, for now, we're going to be putting this in the, in, the, in a Republican column. Uh, moving on, uh, Kentucky, Mitch McConnell. His seat, again, he is the majority leader. Um, he is going to be facing Amy McGrath. Currently, polls show that this race is currently in his favor, so we're going to be putting this in his, in his column. Bill Cassidy, um, Louisiana, again, no um, no polls really show that there is much contention. The state of Maine, Susan Collins, who was easily re-elected in 2014. She got almost 70% of the vote. Um, all, but one polls, all, all but one poll shows this as a toss-up race, with one poll showing this as a lean Democratic uh, race. So, uh, giving, giving that poll the benefit of the doubt, for now we're going to be putting that in the Democratic column. Uh, moving on to the state of Massachusetts, Ed Markey. Uh, again, Massachusetts, very liberal state, very democratic state, very um, um, little pushback from the Republicans there. Uh, the state of Michigan, Gary Peters. Uh, most polls show this as a lean democratic or a safe democratic state. So we'll be giving that to the Democrats. Tina Smith. Um, she won a special election in 2018. She's going she's gonna to run um, to you know, win another term. Um, win a full six-year term this time. And most polls shows um, she's winning handily, she's winning uh, convincingly. Now the next um, state, Mississippi, Cindy Hyde-Smith, she won the 2019, 2018 special election, I should say. Um, I should say. And um, very small uh, possibility I, I see that Democrats win this. Same thing with Nebraska, uh, not Nebraska, oh yeah, Nebraska. Um, ben Sass, um, considered there to be safe seat. Now moving on to the state of Montana. Uh, Steve Daines is the incumbent re um, Republican in that seat. The latest poll shows him actually losing to incumbent governor Steve Bullock, 46 to 44. So um, with that poll showing that, we're going to be giving this to the Democrats another flip for them. Uh, now moving on to New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico. All of these are um, safe Democratic states. So we'll be giving them to the Democrats. So New Jersey, um, New Mexico, and New Hampshire. Uh, moving on to North Carolina, Tom Phillips. This race is shown as a toss-up. Latest poll, Tom Phillips is currently shown as actually trailing um, Cal Cunningham by a few points. So for the time being, we're going to be giving that to the Democrats, along with the state of um, Oregon and Rhode Island. Um, Rhode Island and Oregon, again, two very democratic states. Um, Oklahoma, um, just as this video doesn't roll on for a long time, I'm just going to be filling out some of these. Oklahoma, pre-Republican, um, South Carolina, South Dakota, um, Tennessee, Texas. Um, Texas, although there is a bit of pushback in that state, the latest poll does show him Winning convincingly by almost 10 points, by over 10 points. Um, the state of Virginia, Mark Warner, um, 
shows he has very little um worry currently. Um and Alfonso states Wyoming and West Virginia. Both of these seats are handily in the Repu in the Republican column. So with that being said, um this is our final map. It almost looks like a pres presidential map. Um you know with exception like Montana, um you know, other seats. Um, this looks almost like a presidential map that you could see um, with Democrats winning in the Midwest, the West Coast, the Atlantic States, Virginia, North, um, North Carolina, and, um, and more in the Western Coast as well as in New England. So with that being said, um, Republicans would win a total of, give or take, um, 18 seats, I believe, 16, 18. Um, the Democrats would be winning total of I want to say 12 seats so with that being said there would be around a um a I want to say like um near 50 50 seat margin so again many of these seats can change many of these seats um again aren't done four months away from the elections so um currently it, it's really close um Definitely will almost certainly come down to these battleground states. And if it's so close, it may just come down also to the presidential election. So with that being said, this is our final map. Um, states in blue are states that Democrats win. States like Montana, Arizona, North Carolina, and Maine are flips for them. While states in red are Republican winning. Um, Republican states, uh, Republican people that won. Uh, flips in Alabama and only Alabama. So with that being said, um, a flip of three seats, which would give a 50-50 tie. Um, so in this scenario, if the polls are right, polls are dead on, uh, it'd come down to the presidential race with a 50-50 tie being currently what the result would be. So yeah, that's going to be our final map. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Hope you guys can leave a like, subscribe, comment any suggestions, any feedback. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.